kind of Pastor Ralph with you again. Yesterday, I uh, looked at uh, the passage of Jesus coming into Jerusalem in Luke's gospel and uh, clearing the temple and focused most of the uh, uh, talk on, on the Old Testament prophecies that were mentioned there of um, a, a house of prayer for all nations that may well have been very offensive to the Pharisees. You're going to quote this to us, Jesus, as to what you're doing and why you're doing. And, and likewise, a second piece, and you've made it a house, uh, a den of robbers. Well, let's take a look at the den of robbers and then look at it, the temple a little differently, perhaps, as a way of connect, connecting the temple uh, with us as well. So out of Jeremiah chapter 7, these words, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, reform your ways and your actions and I will let you live in this place. Do not distrust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, we are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. I have been watching as if God could not or would not see all that we do. That's one of those reminders for us, isn't it? God really does see everything and know everything and still loves us and still calls us and invites us and redeems us. Well, I want to look at this quality. Perhaps you'd say it's hypocrisy on the part of the Pharisees that they're upset with Jesus and they want to kill him. But what he's doing is actually calling them to repentance, to come clean, to be honest and open about what is going on in the religious practices that they engage in and what God is calling them to do. Well, if that was a significant matter in Jesus' day for the Pharisees and the temple, think about you and me as being temples of the living God and what is supposed to be going on inside of us. Our love for God, our worship for God, our love and service to neighbor, our mutual love in the body of Christ for one another. And you think about how horrible it is if we give up all of those kinds of things and, and come away believing, but it really doesn't matter how we behave and what we do. And Jesus was very clear in his final days in Jerusalem with some significant teachings that pointed towards the kingdom and ultimately pointed towards a new life and a new way of being. One of the marvelous and powerful references to us as the body of Christ in the New Testament is a, a temple of the living God. And there's a beautiful quality individually of being a temple, just as there is when we consider who we are together as a temple. But we, in a powerful way, can be people to whom others can come for what they need from a priest, for the kinds of things that happen in a temple. What happens when someone comes to us who is heavily burdened with sin and difficulties and asks for our help, and we invite them to unburden themselves, to offer themselves to God. If we become a vehicle, a way for them to come to God, if we pray for them as deeply committed disciples of Christ, think how restorative that can be. Well, we have a high calling as the, as the Pharisees did. I invite us to consider what it means to step more fully into that calling. Grace and peace be with you. God bless you.